Now, the Citrus form is one way to describe the dynamic systems in discrete time. It somewhat corresponds to the frequency here. So when you do a set transform of a time delay, so set of x t minus tau, you get set to the minus tau power x of set. So that's kind of what happens when you do the set transform of a total time series. You denoted x of set, uppercase x, and it's the infinite sum of x t set to the minus t power where set are in general complex numbers, so we are in the complex plane. Remember how you check for stability uh, in the first or well, second assignment. So that we'll get back to. When we are in the set domain, the impulse response that we looked at, h here, now when we do the set transform of that, we call it the transfer function. How you tran what you transfer from your input through your system to get your output. So you have this in the time domain, you have an infinite sum. Here for yt equals the infinite sum of hk times xt minus k. That is equal to an, a product in the set domain. So that's one of the nice things that you can get rid of infinite sums and just consider it being some product. Now let's get back to the linear difference equation that we used. Say, consider thinking of the armor models. We have the general autoregressive part here. You can have some, depending on your inputs here, up to a certain lag. And here we have a, an extra tall as a basic shift of all the inputs here. So that when we do the set transform of this, we have a polynomial here applying on y set equal to set to the minus tau power, and then you have a polynomial again in set up to the q minus q power, and then x offset. So does this look familiar? Hopefully it does to some extent, or at least it will do in a moment. We'll get back to that. But first of all, let's just look at the definition of the transfer function. Basically what we have to do is divide by this parenthesis here, over here, and then we get the transfer function of the system, and we can write it either as polynomials or we can write it as products of the different roots in here. So the roots that we have here in the denominator are called zeros of the system because that's where it cancels out, and the roots in the denominator are called the poles of the system because that's where things are exploding. And as we saw previously, if all those poles are inside the unit circle, then the system is stable. As I mentioned before, the top two rows are here lines are the same as before, but if we think back to the backward shift operator, then what we have is uh, basically the same thing here, set to the minus first power, we just write b to the first power, and then set to the minus p power is b to the p power. Remember what you did was to solve phi of set inverse in phi instead of phi of b. That's exactly what is the difference here. And we can write it in this way as well. In the usual polynomial operator in b. And we can also write the backward shift operator as a, a the inverse of phi of b times the moving average part on xt. We can write that as the impulse response, and it's in general an infinite sum. Again, I'll start from zero, assuming that we have a causal system here. And then we can write it either using b to some i power in xt, or we can just subtract the time when we look at it there. So when we do it for b here, it's similar to when a set transform, and therefore, we also call that a transfer function, whereas we call the coefficients there the impulse response.